Well, hello, this is Pastor Ricky Hart of Vision Church, and this is today's vision word for you. And it comes out of Proverbs chapter 3. I want to read the first three verses to you. Verse 1, My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. And in verse 3, our verse we're going to focus on, is let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck, write them upon the tablet of thine heart. Now Solomon, the writer of these Proverbs, is trying to give us some advice in order to better our life. And in verse 3, he says, let not mercy and truth forsake thee. But he goes on to say, bind them about thy neck, write them upon the table of thine heart. So in his words of advice to you and I, he's given us a something not to do, the negative, and something to do, which would be the positive. Now let's look at the, the thing that he's advising us not to do. And it says, let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Now, mercy and truth, as is used in the Bible there, mercy speaks about goodness, speaks about kindness, it speaks about faithfulness. Uh, the truth, as it's used in the Bible, speaks about uh, faithfulness, uh, uprightness, truth, as opposed to uh, a lie. Now, in both of these terms, uh, as they're used in the Bible, they are referred to many times as speaking about the promises of God. And that's how I want to use them this morning. Now, he uses these terms. It says, uh, let not mercy and truth forsake thee. The word forsake is used in the Bible of, of leaving something behind or to, to untie something. In Exodus chapter 32, excuse me, 23, it speaks about uh, if you find your enemy, uh, enemy's beast of burden that's collapsed up under a load, uh, that you're not to just walk away and, and not do anything, but you are to, to loose that burden off of that animal. Let the, let the animal go. And so that, that speaks uh, you know, volumes when you think about uh, what Solomon is trying to tell us here, these words of advice telling us you know, not to allow the, the promises of God, the, the Word of God, to, to be loose from us, not to lose interest in it, not to leave it behind, not to untie it from ourselves. So that's the thing he says, hey, don't do that. Don't lose interest in the, in the Word of God, in the commandments of God, in the promises of God. You know, don't forget those things. Don't, don't uh, leave them behind. And then he moves on to the positive thing. He says, but, but do this. And listen to what he says. He says, bind them about thy neck. And so he's speaking about just like we would have a, uh, a necklace or something that we, we cared about, we thought was attractive. We would we'd put it around our neck. And he's speaking about that same thing. The word bind speaks about tying one thing to another thing. And so what is he speaking about? Well, we're talking about the, the word of God, the promises of God specifically. And so he said, hey, you know, the, the promises of God, uh, let them be like an ornament. Let them be like a necklace that you would tie around your neck, just like you would your favorite necklace uh, that you would wear. Let the promises of God be like that. Tie them around your neck. You know, the, the Israelites were commanded in Deuteronomy chapter 6 to take the, the word of God and, and to tie it between the frontless of their eyes so it'd be kind of like a necklace but it was it was further up it was where it would hang down right above the nose and it had the shema on it the uh, deuteronomy chapter 6 verses uh, 1 and 2 and they would actually do that and so every time you know that they looked forward every time that they they moved you know that that little uh, front frontlet of the word of god would be right between their eyes so it would always be before them they were also to put it on the doorpost and also the gates of their uh, around their home. So uh, they would never forget the word of God. What Solomon is speaking about here is taking the, the promises of God, the word of God, and, you know, tying it around our neck like we would a necklace, uh, like a piece of uh, uh, something that we would use to, to uh, have, uh, you know, like an ornament around our neck. He also says that to let these things, the promises of God, let them be written upon the tablets of your heart. Now, did you realize that your heart can be uh, written upon? You know, we can actually take a pen or something. Sometimes we may want to make a note, don't have a piece of paper. We can write it on our palm of our hand. I'll do that sometimes. But did you realize that you can also write upon your heart? And that's what he's saying here. He said, write them upon the tablet of your heart. Now, he's not talking about our physical heart. Because the word heart here simply speaks about the, the inner man, the very center of our, our being, the soul, 
the, the center of our emotions, the center of our thinking, the mind, the will. And see, that part of us can be written upon. That part of us can be really uh, engraved, if you will, because, you know, he says, uh, the tablets of your heart. Now, he's making a reference to the tablets of stone that Moses had when he came down from Mount Sinai. God had had carved into it with his his very own uh, being the Ten Commandments that we would call them, the Law of Moses. And Moses came down from the mountain with these tablets of stone and it had engraved in them the Law of God. And so he's making reference to that, but he's, he's also drawing that allusion to our heart. And he says, let the, the Word of God, let the promises of God, the commandments of God, let those things be etched upon your heart. Uh, it literally says this, it says, uh, write them upon the tablet of thine heart. So it's comparing our heart uh, it, in a way to the tablets of stone that uh, Moses had is, that were written on by the finger of God. Now, how do we allow or how do we get the promises of God written on our heart? Well, first of all, we've got to come in contact with it. We've got to uh, hear it or we've got to read it, study it. And then we've got to try to understand it. You know, and the Holy Spirit, the Bible tells us, is our teacher. And he is more than willing to help us understand the Word of God. And so we get the Word of God into our being, get it in, inside of us by reading it or hearing it. And then uh, as we do that, then God himself begins to, to etch the Word of God into our heart. You know, the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 12, it says the Word of God is quick and powerful. It's sharper than any two-edged sword, able to discern even to the uh, dividing asunder of soul and spirit, the joints and the marrow. And it is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. And in Revelation chapter 1 and verse 16, speaking about Jesus Christ, it said, In his right hand he held seven stars, and coming out of his mouth was a sharp, double-edged sword. So, out of the mouth of God came the the sword of God, the word of God, which is described as a sword. So if you can envision with me a sword uh, engraving into a, uh, a piece of stone, the, the word of God, that word of God does the same thing in our hearts. When the word of God gets inside of our being, that word of God, that double-edged sword begins to engrave into our heart his promises, his word. Now think about it like this. It's because of the mercy of God that God gives us his promises. And it's because of the truth of God that he keeps his promises. So as we think about God's promises, you know, given to us through his mercy and God keeping his promises because he is himself truth, you know, we realize that God is a, a promise-giving and a promise-keeping God. And that should really encourage us. You know, someone has estimated there's about 8,000 promises in the word of God. And if there's 8,000 promises in the Word of God, then there's a promise that meets what you're going through right now. And if we get the Word of God into our, into our mind, if we get it into our heart, the very center of our being, and we begin to think about it, you know, the more we do that, the more it becomes engraven in our heart. The more, you know, it becomes etched into our heart. And we can think about that, you know, during the course of day or during the course of night and become, become a tremendous uh, point of encouragement for us. And whatever you're going through, that promise of God that you need, you know, it's there. You can find it. You can uh, read it. You can listen to it. Meditate upon it. Let it become etched in your heart. And, you know, as you think about that promise of God, man, that'll be an encouragement through, for you throughout the day. I'm glad that you tuned in today. I appreciate you listening to us. And so much appreciate you sharing. God bless you.